my life story is that uh, if you work hard you can do miracles here we are here because we got help we didn't do it on our own so our job is to pass it on to the next generation the same thing that you need to help others when i sold my business i shared my fortune with every employee in the company i felt very strongly that without the people we could not succeed in business people made us successful i always felt very strongly that those of us who have had the good fortune in this country that we should give back to our origin our country which provided us free education and made everything possible The life of Suri Siegel, born in the part of India that is now Pakistan, is a quintessential American success story. He overcame adversity in his country of origin and became a successful and esteemed crop scientist, seedsman, and entrepreneur, who is making a profound difference in the lives of millions of people in the developing world. Surrender Mohan Suri Siegel was born in 1934 in a small town, Guliana, in the then undivided British-occupied Indian province of Punjab. He was the fifth of eight children of a Sikh mother, Sushila Kar Vadhadvan, and a Hindu father, Fakir Chan Shaji Siegel, a disciple and follower of Mahatma Gandhi, and member of the Indian National Congress working for India's independence from British rule. And he grew up with very strong Gandhian ideals, and he had a very happy childhood up until a certain point. When partition came to India in 1947. Suri was 13 when the British Raj finally left, dividing the subcontinent into two nations, India and Pakistan. The violence and bloodshed that followed claimed countless lives. In the midst of the mayhem, Shaji Siegel decided to send three of his six daughters with his oldest son, Badar, to the relative safety of India. So his dad woke Suri up uh, about five o'clock in the morning and said, you have to come and help me get your sisters to the train station, help carry the luggage. And so they got to the train station and were, and were horrified to find that it was so crowded. My two sisters got squeezed into one compartment and my brother got squeezed into an other compartment and Toshi, who's uh, Santosh, who's 11 years old, had no place and she was put into another compartment. And Suri's father, in a panic as the train was pulling away, pushed Suri on the train and said, take care of your sister. The train ride, which lasted several days, was terrifying for the Siegel siblings. Every time the train stopped, there were bloody bodies all around the train tracks where people were being killed. Once his sisters were temporarily safe with a friend on the India side, young Siri went to Delhi to find their uncle. Homeless for weeks, he slept in empty train cars and attended evening prayer meetings held by Mahatma Gandhi, who was trying to hold people together in the chaos. While sitting at Gandhi's feet each evening, Suri heard ideas that reinforced what his father had always stressed in their home about inclusion and equality, including gender equality, that girls deserve the same good education as boys. That message soaked in deeply, and the seeds were planted for Surrey's lifelong priorities. The Siegel family eventually reunited at a refugee camp. Though they lost all their possessions, land, and business, they were grateful to be alive. The Siegels rebuilt their lives in Amritsar, near the Pakistan border. Suri completed high school and went on to earn bachelor's and master's degrees and honors in botany in India. His dream was now to study plant genetics with Harvard professor Paul C. Mangelsdorf, a giant in the field. Harvard University accepted Suri, and he arrived in the United States in the summer of 1959. In the summer of 1962, Suri met a beautiful German girl, Ada Jelinski, whose visa was being sponsored by a political science professor at Harvard. The family spoke fluent German and helped Etta learn English. Etta, remarkably, had a similar refugee past, although the two didn't share that information with each other. She came from a part of uh, Germany that is now Poland. Her family escaped in the dead of night and went by uh, horse cart to get out of uh, danger, and they ended up meeting each other and it was like firecrackers. In June 1963, 
Suri successfully defended his PhD thesis, which explored changes that occur when corn is hybridized with its two wild relatives, Diocinti and Tripsicum. After graduation, my major professor suggested that uh, before I go back, uh, it will be good if I get practical training. In September 1963, Suri arrived in Des Moines, Iowa, in a car he purchased for $200 to work as postdoctoral fellow at what was then a regional seed company called Pioneer High Bread Corn Company. Pioneer was founded by Henry A. Wallace, who served as U.S. Vice President under Franklin D. Roosevelt. Suri was thrilled to launch his career there and work alongside Dr. William Lacey Brown, another doyen in the field of plant genetics. Suri found the Midwest and Iowa extremely welcoming. Within a few months, Etta joined Suri in Iowa. Bill Brown was highly impressed with Suri, and the two formed an excellent relationship. Halfway through the fellowship, Dr. Brown offered Suri a job as a tropical corn breeding specialist in Jamaica. On September 26, Suri and Etta were married in the home of Bill and Alice Brown with a small reception for the couple. The next day, Suri and Etta left for Jamaica to pursue Dr. Brown's dream of developing a hybrid of corn maize adapted to the tropics. It takes normally six, seven years to develop a new product, but tropical countries have an advantage because you can get two, sometimes you can get more than two crops per year. You are not limited to one crop, so the cycle goes quick. In six years, Suri turned what started as a research project into a profitable venture with five hybrids. Certainly we were also making money for the company, for the headquarters. It was a little eye-opener that there is a business possibility. So that's how the whole international business of Pioneer got started. Suri's bosses were impressed with what he did in Jamaica and now offered a big new assignment for him. I got in the mail a letter, uh, would you be interested to come uh, to Des Moines, return to Des Moines and uh, start the international uh, program. Suri and Etta returned to Iowa in 1970, now with two children, Kenny and Ben, who were born during their stint in Jamaica. Over 24 years, Suri built the Pioneer Overseas Corporation and helped make Pioneer Hybrid International a Fortune 500 company in the process. With his uh, special brand of, uh, of uh, personality and strategic thinking and uh, initiative, he started 100 separate businesses overseas. Bill Brown was greatly impressed with Suri's talent for creating new relationships and lucrative partnerships, and Suri appreciated Dr. Brown's leadership style. Uh, he would uh, empower the people but never tell people what to do. That uh, principle I followed throughout. Uh. Pioneer Overseas registered outstanding growth under Surrey's leadership. By 1988, the company had more than 1,600 employees in 60 countries with 27 breeding stations. Soon after the retirement of Bill Brown, Surrey left Pioneer and took a chief operating officer position with a company in Belgium on the cutting edge of new technologies. Then in 1989, Surrey launched his own entrepreneurial career and set up four companies. One was a small seed company in India that he acquired full ownership of as part of an agreement with Pioneer. The company, ProAgro, focused on four crops, corn, millet, sorghum, and sunflower. By incorporating biotechnology and IT innovations to the Indian seed industry, ProAgro became the largest hybrid seed company in India. In 1998, after building ProAgro for 10 years, Suri and Etta received an offer from the German giant, now Bayer, that they couldn't refuse. When they received the multi-million for the sale of these companies, they shared the wealth with every single person that um, worked for the company. Years later, Suri did the same when he sold another seed business, Miser High Tech, which was based in Egypt. Suri and Etta decided to devote the bulk of the money they received from the sale of ProAgra to help the rural poor in Suri's country of origin. The Sagals are very low-key, so their American story 
is a modest one. Once they achieve success, they looked at who should benefit from their wealth. They view themselves as trustees, as stewards, stewards of the wealth that they made. They wanted to give it back to rural India because farmers had been such a part of his um, seed business um, and his roots being in India, that seemed inappropriate. He really felt that this was the right time for him to move to the next uh, stage in his life is getting into philanthropy aspect because I think that was, that's a, always have been in his mind. Sir Anetta set up two foundations, one in the United States and the other in India, with the goal of making a positive difference in the lives of the rural poor in India. This time we have given the Sagal Foundation to the side of the Sagal Foundation. So we have got the so we had a trial of it. So it was a good germination of the bees. It was a good water of the bees. And we put it in the field. So it was a good job. So it was a good job for the farmers. From the beginning, the Foundation's goals were to address the most pressing needs of India's poorest rural communities. Food security, water security, and good governance with a primary focus on the empowerment of women. He agreed with Kofi Annan that no rural development is possible without the empowerment of girls and women. For more than 20 years, Siegel Foundation teams have worked in partnership with community members to build their capacities to take responsibility for their own development and bring about a more promising future for the farm families that make up rural India. The Siegel Foundation scientists, the, the engineers that work there, there's hydraulics experts who, who are on staff who've invented technologies that are making a difference. Schools are being transformed so that kids are learning digital literacy and life skills and girls are coming back to school because they're making sure the schools have, you know, the government schools have bathrooms for both boys and girls, which wasn't the case and isn't the case in most of the schools. Suri and Etta have also supported educational and environmental causes in the U.S. They have long supported the World Food Prize Foundation, an iconic Iowa institution that honors leaders in the global food supply. Since I am from agriculture, my desire was to do whatever I can to uplift the people in, in, in the villages in, the, in the rural India where the greatest poverty lies. We always felt that we should do something for India. Suri always felt very strongly about that because he saw the need, obviously, and he felt that he got such a very good education there. Otherwise, nothing would have been possible for him in this country. We really saw the difference uh, that we had made in the villages where, we, where they were growing our seed corn, where we worked with farmers. It was tremendous, the development that took place. And those same values continue with his wife, Etta, his partner every step of the way, who shares his vision and who has collaborated fully with Surrey in his business and philanthropic efforts from the start. Surrey Siegel embodies the soul and potential of America. Its hopes and dreams, his American journey is not just a story of a person shaping his own future and accomplishing success. It's also about how he used the success he achieved in America to create an ecosystem of sorts that provides people in faraway villages with opportunities to live more secure, prosperous, and dignified lives.